webinar. Uh, first, I uh, want to thank you for participating, uh, not only on this one, but also on other uh, events which were part of the Ad hoc Digital Accelerator Program. Uh, it was the first uh, type of uh, uh, initiative from Anox side, and we were very happy with the outcome, and thank you very much for participating. Uh, today we have a special guest, it's uh, Mr. Nasser Majali, he's the Secretary General of the Jordan NOC. Uh, so Nasser, he was appointed the Secretary General uh, at the GOC on October 2016, so it was after Rio, following an extensive business and management career in both education and practice over previous 18 years. He has worked across uh, different uh, industry sectors, such as IT, trading, financial services, and NGOs. He is currently a member of the IOC Marketing Commission and also the ANOC Technical Working Group. He is an executive board member of the Islamic Society Sports Federation and a member of the Olympic Council of Asia Sports Commission. He is also vice president of the Arab Esports Federation and the West Asian Jiu Jitsu Federation. So, uh, very long <laughs> resume for Nasser. Just before I give him the, the floor, just remember that uh, we do have uh, Spanish and French uh, interpretations. To choose your preferred language, you can just uh, use the little globe uh, on the bottom right. And uh, the idea, as the previous uh, webinars, is really for it to be very uh, informal. And we encourage you to ask questions, take this opportunity to ask uh, uh, Nasser as many questions as you wish. Uh, you can do it either on the chat, or we also invite you to open the camera and, and ask your questions directly to Nasser. And so with this, thanks again for participating. I encourage you to please uh, take the, to fill out the feedback form that we're going to share in the chat. It only takes uh, less than three minutes to fill out, and it's important for us to understand uh, what your feedback is so we can continue to improve. So without further ado, Nasser, thanks a lot. The floor is yours. Thanks, Gustavo. Thanks, uh, Anok. Hi, everyone. Um, a pleasure being with you all uh, here today and a double pleasure for this being the last webinar um, of the year. Um, before I start, um, I have two points. Uh, point number one will be that, um, uh, in general, I like it to be um, more free-flowing uh, discussion. Um, so any questions that you have, I might just uh, take those questions uh, during the session so we don't necessarily wait until the end, so it's more interactive. The second part is I want to thank Anok, and I've been quite uh, vocal about uh, this specific point, uh, about uh, having these webinars and having the study that Anok did on uh, social media and social media reach and engagement uh, for the different NOCs. Um, this uh, has become a major uh, indicator that is assisting us as an NOC and you as NOCs to know uh, what we need to work on, how well we are doing compared to other NOCs, and who we can uh, collaborate uh, with in the future. Um, for any of you who haven't looked through um, all the research that Anok um, and their team and their consultants have done, I do recommend uh, that you look through that because it has been a major of major added value for us. And it defines more and more uh, a major role that Anok has either in, um, in the rating and ranking system and KPI system for us as NOCs. And the other part is uh, the outcome, which is something like these webinars where we get to share um, our different experiences as NOCs so that we have engagement between each other and build on it. Um, with that being said, I will, uh, I will start my presentation. I will not go through it word by word. I will flow through it. Um, tell you the story of us um, as an NOC with social media, and then um, and then with that, just kind of interact during every uh, part of the presentation. So I hope it's uh, quick. I'll try to be as quick as possible so that we have uh, much more time to uh, discuss the different points that we have in there. Let me just do the quick part, which is sharing my screen. And then... Starting the presentation. All right. Um, 
just to uh, kind of just uh, say where the agenda stands, mainly this is going to be the storyline of um, what we did with social media, um, how we determined what issues and what strengths and weaknesses we have, how we eventually developed a strategy, how we work on our content to keep interest in our social media, and um, what um, growth model there was. And at the end, uh, I'll go towards a to Tokyo 2020 case study and the Arab NOC campaign. Um, in 2012, so, so this is more of a historical view of where uh, we were and how it worked with social media. So we launched our Facebook and Twitter pages in 2012. Uh, but in real reality, the big boost started in early 2017 when we launched a new national strategy for sports and our first phase, which is the Inspire phase, leading up to the experience that we had in 2021 for the Tokyo 2020 Games. Um, okay. Um, the issues that we saw that we had during 2016 uh, were that uh, we had no, if not limited, social media strategy. Um, we didn't have really a lot of content. So if, if I want to put it in context, um, the amount of content that we had uh, was um, about um, 10 videos to 12 videos that we produce on a yearly basis. This is in 2016. And about 80 articles that we write um, on a yearly basis. Um, during that when we came in in 2016, one of the first departments we looked at was the Marcom department and, and, and marketing and communications. And the reason we looked there is because we knew that whatever we do, if, it, if nobody knows about it, really, we're not going to be able to garner support or garner any type of um, um, uh, lobbying neither with government nor with uh, our different stakeholders, it, whether it be federations. So we came in and we started with doing a, a strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats analysis. So like any business uh, or like any institution, we came in with a business approach. We came to see what our clientele or, our, or the people who watch what we do where they stand, what they care about, what do they see, and we assessed ourselves as a business. I have a product, sports. I have um, something to pr present, which is sports content, and where do we stand there? Uh, two of the highlights here, um, we looked at an opportunity of being a trusted source for sports news as we had a weakness in um, the, 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 the lack of a professional, one professional uh, media within the different NOCs or the different NFs, sorry, national federations. And at the same time, we found that there's a, a lack of uh, good coverage for a lot of the sporting events, other than the one or two major sports that we have, like football and basketball. So we jumped on that opportunity and we decided that we needed to quickly, and by quickly, I mean like two months we decided to quickly develop a strategy. And, and, and here, um, I would like to just uh, note a major note in, in developing a strategy. Um, you, it, it doesn't need to be something complicated. It doesn't need to be something that's highly, highly documented. You just need to have a mission, have a vision, and, and put out your objectives. It's just textbook, simple. Um, uh, what we did, and, and this is what I want to share. What we did is we sat down as a team. I sat down with my team, some of whom uh, um, are knowledgeable in media, some of them are not knowledgeable in media. And we sat down and we said, listen, these are the problems that we have. This is what I want. We want to grow our social media platforms. We want to be, um, we, we, we want to have more reach. We want our message to reach out to all our community and to Jordanians. Um, and this is what we did. And we wanted to be a trusted source of sporting news and information. And, and how that helped is that whatever, eventually, whatever we wrote on our social media was um, 
was important and was significant. Uh, and this has created a stronger bond between us and national media and us and international media. Um, and with that, we set up our objectives. I'm not going to go through our objectives because every objectives in every different NOC will be different. But the mission and vision usually are closer to what we would all uh, look at and want. Um, so this is what the structures looked like. And mainly the old structure had no clear KPIs. And this is where I started uh, in my presentation with talking about ANOC and them um, setting key performance indicators, numbers that we could look at. Everybody loves numbers, loves to see percentages, loves to see a total amount of people, a total reach, to total engagement. Um, these were no, nowhere to be seen. Um, we covered only our events. So if we had a Olympic values event, if we had a um, uh, Olympic day, if we had our own Olympics, that's what we used to cover. And we had no team, honestly, nobody to create content, no video producers, no archiving system, uh, photographs um, were literally not archived at the JOC, they were archived at the, at the NFs if they had an archive, and we had no uh, in-house designer for anything. And, and this is part of the discussion uh, that, that uh, Gustavo just asked me before my presentation. I was showing one of the videos that I will show later, and he was like, was this done in-house? And I said, yeah, we did it in-house. And um, in-house production became something that we needed because we had a lot of content. Uh, but um, it is not necessary, but it is part of the progression in the case of the Jordan Olympic Committee. Um, today's structure completely changed. Um, all whom I said we did not have, we have today. We cover all sports in Jordan. So um, anything and everything is covered by our team. So if there is a football game, um, the Jordan Olympic Committee team is there, even if the football, if football is archiving it and covering it, we're there in basketball, taekwondo, jiu-jitsu, karate, and you go on and on. Any event today we know about, we send our team to, we cover, especially if it's under our uh, national federations. And from a performance point of view today, um, we have insights coming in from the different social media platforms, which are the reports that Facebook puts out, Twitter puts out. We have our own key performance indicators, one of which now is the ANOC um, KPIs, where we stand in rank in Asia, where we stand in rank globally, where our strengths and weaknesses there. And also we take in the different recommendations from our board, from our different team members, and we build on that for years to come. Um, one second, I just want to, um, Gustavo, are you there? Yes, yes. Gustavo, I can't, so I can't see if there are any questions. So if there are any questions, just stop me and jump in. Is that okay? Yeah, we'll let you okay. know. Perfect. Um, so our content, uh, the content that, and, 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 and I want this to be as relatable as possible to everybody listening in, um, is, is, very, is very simple. We, we create in-house content, whether it is, videos or whether it is written or whether it is audio related, mainly videos and written. And we try to have different types of it. Either it's news or it's something to engage the public, engage the public like um, asking questions to the public, who's your favorite uh, football player, etc. And, and having them engage, but more when we create competitions on there informative and historical informative goes closer to news but historical uh, would be something like the history of the olympic games the history of sports in jordan etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the communication channels which are now known to all of us uh, those are the social media platforms so we have um, facebook we have twitter we have instagram we have snapchat each one 
depend يعني our strength in each one depends on the strength of that social media locally and i can tell you from now facebook is the strongest one in in jordan within uh, the followers of the olympic committee and generally um another communication channel is athletes through media and one uh, we have bloggers and influencers who we bring in and talk to on an annual and sometimes uh, twice a year where we have different discussions and engagement and we have traditional media. My team um, had a long discussion with me if we should add traditional media within a social media um, uh, presentation. But really, uh, to us, we see all these outlets as being one and the same. Um, we use social media a lot, but everything that you see on social media, we reflect, we try to reflect as much of it as possible in traditional media, because we have a lot of clientele who still prefers um, uh, traditional media. Okay, I'm having fun with a stuck presentation. Okay. Um, as um, as 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 you can see here, this is what we call um, the action grid. So we have an action. We have the people involved in it, and we have the tools and techniques that we use. And I'll just give one of the examples. So the action was more media coverage for all national events. Um, the team that we have is our media team and any other parties that would work with them on it. And then the tools and techniques is the press releases, video news releases, archiving and live coverage. So this is one example of a, a whole action grid for one of our different actions. A, an easier one to relate to is archiving system. Something we didn't have before is how to create an online system and, and keep the whole videos and archives on one uh, platform. And today we chose a very good platform with that, with it, which is Google Drive. So now there's a whole standard operating procedure within JOC after taking any photo or after taking any video on tagging them and putting them within a, a filing system just to make sure that we can get them when we need them so that we can create more and more uh, media content, noting that eventually what we would love to have is to have an online archiving system to be accessed by the public so that if anybody wants to create anything about Jordanian sports, they can access it easily online for free. Um, as we all love numbers, um, we have a, um, uh, the show off of numbers that you can see. Uh, the colors uh, just indicate um, the years. So you, you will see, you will notice that there is a boost in reach in, um, in, in, in 2018. Um, a major boost in reach there. But then the, other than that anomaly, you see that it's generally has been an increase uh, in followers, in reach, in engagement and video views. So from a follower point of view today, we have about 1.15 million uh, followers uh, on all our platforms. Uh, we have very significant reach. Let's say it averaged out at around 40 million uh, uh, per, per, per year. Uh, we have about 2 million engagements and we have about 8 million video views. But the reach in that anomaly was because we had the Asian Games, Youth Olympic Games that year. I don't know what the, the data for, um, for 2021 will be closed within a month and then we see how much the engagement was for the, for the Tokyo Games within that calculation. Um, this is just generally a view of uh, the breakup of a viewership for age and gender. Important to note that we've had a, quite an increase in um, female engagement within our pages. Um, and that's because we have targeted females of all ages on those um, with content that um, uh, uh, relates to them more and more. Um, Tokyo 2020 specifically is one um, example that I wanted to go through. Um, so let me 
let's let's stay away from what's written there and let me tell you what we did so about nine months to ten months before the games we had to sit down um of course we had that sit down in 2019 and then we had to repeat it in 2020 because the games were delayed but the the actual one that 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 worked for tokyo 2020 uh, was one that we had around the end of uh 2020 so for the 2021 games um i had to sit down with my media team uh, media, social media, videographers, photographers, and we started talking about how will we create engaging content during the games, before the games, and after the games, and how do we create some legacy projects from that. Uh, this is a ge a generally a brainstorming session. We just kind of sit down around the table. We start putting out ideas. We have the mainstream stuff. So we have what we have established as news, coverage, photos, videos. That's standard. And then we started talking about things that are not standard. Example, we created a tourism campaign for Jordan. We talked to the Ministry of, um, of Tourism. We started sending our athletes. So this was a plan to send our athletes to historical sites and touristic sites in Jordan, do videos and photos for them there, shoots. And from that, to create content uh, before the games, during the games, and even um, this was one, one project. Another project was the 100 Olympic facts. So what, every day in the last 100 days before the games, we put out a, a, an Olympic fact. And, and all I'm trying to give you an example of here is these are, this is how we draw up something different to engage our different uh, followers and to create enough content to lead up to the games to have during the games and to keep for after the games. Um, another notable project that I might show a, a video of at the end was uh, the Arab uh, NOC campaigns. So this was more of a collaboration um, to, to highlight during the games, every medalist from the different Arab countries as we write our content in Arabic, some of, a lot of our content in Arabic. So we found that there's a gap in some of the news about the different medals. So we, it was more of a congratulate to congratulate the different um, Arab countries for their medals and build more of a collaboration on that. Um, finally, I would like just to note two, two other points here. We have a legacy website that we created for post games. So this is a website that's there to show what happened during the games, who the athletes were, what they achieved there and they kind of to keep it for history. And also during the games, um, we had a lot of interviews that were uh, recorded with the athletes before the games. And we, we, we recorded a lot of interviews during the games and post games, all of this so that we are capable of building the different documentaries in the future and having this within our archive uh, so we can create whatever we like to create in the future and also to collaborate with other channels that would like to do that example with somebody like Olympic Channel. Okay. Um, I'm nearing the end of my structured presentation. I would like to show you a couple of things that we, we did. This is a pre um, a pre-games uh, project, which was just our athletes who qualified, talking about their qualification. This is completely produced in-house by our film production team and in different locations in Jordan. Um, let's, it's just about a minute. Okay, maybe a minute and 20 seconds. تلقيت خبر اختياري للمشاركة في أولمبياد طوكيو فرحة كتير كبيرة طب أنت مجهز حالي على المستوى النفسي وعلى المستوى البدن هو الحمد لله أني قدرت أدهب مبسوطة كتير وفخورة أنه أمثلك بقدي بأولمبياد طوكيو أبدي كتير عشان أتأهل الوصول للأولمبياد حلم وتحقق حلمي وحلم أي رياضي أنه يشارك في الأولمبياد المرة الثانية على التوالي بتأهل أحسن إشي حصل بحياتي تأهلي للأولمبياد 
تأهل الأولمبياد جهد تعب سنين الحمد لله ما راح الفاضي حلم كل رياضي اني اصل طوكيو الكردنيين فخورين كثير انه نمثل الاردن 21 سنه وانا لاعب منتخب حلمي كان هو تأهل الاولمبياد يعني انا بفرح ما حد بيعلم فيها Support, um, support Jordan, uh, the the champions of Jordan Sports in Tokyo 2020, and watch them through uh, Jordan social media. So this is more of an advertisement slash teaser uh, campaign for um, for our uh, athletes and for our social media during the games. Um, so. As, as I, I said, as using Tokyo 2020 as an example, this was more or less what we had for pre-games, the countdown for the games. So there was um, a, a, um, um, an example or, or a piece of in, new or um, historical data that we put about the games, 100 facts about the games. Um, we uh, had this uh, follower of where are they now? Where are our athletes? Where are they training? Uh, we had some uh, quotes from our different athletes and in interviews. Uh, we had then the final countdown and we had the qualification of each athlete. We had kind of a celebratory um, uh, message every time one of our athletes uh, qualified. This was pre-games. During the games, you have the news. You have the news, you have the videos, you have anybody who got a medal. You, uh, they, they, we would have a quick video of them while they're training in the background, getting ready to go in. Um, you have the pre-match uh, schedule, schedule of TV, schedule of... Um, so uh, just for the interpreters, it's just a general thing um, that we have general news about our athlete in the games and we had the tourism campaign going on at the same time um this is post game games uh, we had the coverage of what happened to them when they came back to jordan um, their arrival at the airport any celebrations that happened there um, our champions our pride campaign uh, the website the legacy website and we created uh, the wikis uh, that are tied to our campaign so that you have a lot of content available online about our athletes and about Jordan sports, the games. Um, quick numbers. Um, so in Tokyo, sorry, some for you. Okay. I will so so I will answer the question regarding uh, game assets uh, right after this one's slightly complicated. Um, so we had um, we had a hundred we had a hundred fifty seven unique posts during the games and two hundred and thirty four unique stories. So the total story reach was about two point two million. Um, total reach 8.5 million, of which 4.3 million was organic, engagement 2.7 million, 17.3 million impressions. All of this, so when we say organic versus non-organic, including the Arab campaign, which I'm going to show on the next uh, link, uh, costs us about $5,000. So this is, other than the cost of our team, which is already there, um, uh, this is the total cost of what we invested online for different campaigns and for everything which technically speaking is peanuts compared to the reach um we had the the specific campaign so this is a sub project within the tokyo games um we had 17 posts so these posts would come up whenever an arab athlete would uh get a medal um, and we had this sub campaign by itself had 5.5 million uh, total reach and 1 million engagements. It was a very significant campaign, and this is why uh, we shared it in here. This would be a, there are multiple sub campaigns within our campaign. Um, uh, Gustavo, I'm done with the core, core um, presentation. I would like just to show part of two videos and I'll explain them very quickly. The first video that I will show 
is what we kicked off, re-kicked off our social media with. This was an in-house project uh, that we worked on to explain the story of our champs. Because it's only in Arabic um, and it's only a major question is what, it, what does it mean to be a champion? And mainly it's telling everybody the story of what our athletes go through uh, to become champions. I will kind of skim through it because I think it's slightly long-ish. And then um, I will show you the Arab campaign video that we did about two years ago that we reused in our campaign. Both of these reached more than 1 million views and had a lot of engagements in them. So this is why I'm sharing them to show you the type of content that we are uh, that we use to kick off campaigns with. Very well. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. إيش يعني بطل؟ الناس صغير من القصة بتشوف الميداليات والكاميرات والمقابلات بتشوف النصر بس قلال اللي بيعيشوا المعركة إيش يعني بطل؟ يعني تصحى الصبح والناس نايمة والكل يحكي لك ليش متعب حالك ومع هيك بتصحى وبتروح تدريب حتى لو ما حدا فاهم Homes and training areas. إيش يعني بطل؟ يعني تترك أصحابك وتبعد عن اللحظات الحلوة لأنه عندك إشي أهم. يعني تترك أهلك اللي مشتاقين لك لأنه عندك سبب. لأنه في إشي جواك بمنعك توقف. إيش يعني بطل؟ يعني توقف ضد مخاوفك وشكوكك ضد الظروف اللي مش بصفك. ضد المنطق اللي بيحكي إنك ما راح تفوز يعني توقف ضد حالك وتأخذ قرار إنه ما في رجعة بدي أفوز وأرفع هالعلم فوق غصب عن الكل غصب عن حالي So this was a kick off of a campaign called You Are the Champ and this was early on in our campaign. Um, this one, I will really show just a little part of. This is a video, th there's two Jordanian singers that uh, created a video about the different national anthems of all the different Arab countries. Um, we called them up, we asked them to use that music um, to turn it into a video. Um, and they 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 okayed it. So um, this is just a snap of it. I'll show about one minute of it, and then we'll go to questions. <laughs> Sports brings us together. Um, this work is presented by the Jordan Olympic Committee for our brothers in um, Arab sports. Uh, it's mainly just kind of calling to have the Arab games um, come back and for us to work on it. Um, Gustavo is a core presentation. I'm done. Um, sorry. Perfect. Dane, thanks a lot for sharing all this information, Nasser. Yeah, you're welcome. So yeah, we invite everyone to post questions or just to raise your hand to ask your questions uh, here live on, on video. 
But uh, I have some questions myself, but maybe we can start with the question from Inoke, if that's okay for you. Yeah, you want the one that was posted already. Yes. So for your pre-games, collateral, how did you manage the sign-off process for use of the game's assets with Tokyo 2020? They're talking in here about the Tokyo 2020 logo. I believe so, yes, their they're property. So the wording and the logo and the usage. So what we did is we communicated directly with the IOC and with the, um, with the IOC marketing and branding team. So we had the marketing team at JOC talk to them. We communicated via email on each and every, practically each and every single product and project that we had to do. So whenever we had to use their logo, we sent in a request, we got a reply. So when that became a standard operating procedure, it just became a routine that we do. We send it their way. They look at it. They send us the okay. Um, and on some things, they pre-approved them. So we we had a certain type of template that was set up. But on other things, we had to get specific uh, approvals. Good. Bashir, 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 sorry that I cut the Algerian uh, national anthem in the middle. I didn't mean to, but I just wanted to skip to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. In yeah. okay, is this answer good for you, or do you want to um, have any other doubts? If you want to turn on your 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 mic, it's okay. We invite you to do that, so make it more engaging. Uh, yes, thank you. The question was answered. I the um, routineness, I guess, of the process as well as the pre-approved templates is something I can take away from this one. So thank you for answering the question. And, and, and I'll tell you one more thing. It's not a super system, but it works. Yani they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of quick in replying and telling you, yeah, that's okay, that's okay. So it's easy. Good. We have a raise hand here from, from Bashir. So Go ahead, Bashir. Fadal Bashir. I think uh, you're muted, Bashir. Can you hear us, Bashir? Okay. No? Yeah. Here you yeah. Uh, hello. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I am Bashir Mukhtari from the uh, Algerian National Olympic and Sports Committee. I have a question if it's. Yes, I hear you. Uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. The delay in translation. We hear you, Bashir. You can go ahead. So my. Uh, I have uh, one question for, for you that, uh, as you know, uh, we in Algeria, unfortunately, we, we didn't get any medals in Tokyo and uh, we received, in a, uh, uh, and we received a lot of uh, insults and uh, bad comment in our uh, social media. I, I want to know how we can handle such uh, crisis in our uh, social media? I have an answer because <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. It's, a, um, it's an issue that you don't only face in Algeria. I think we face it in uh, Jordan as much as you face it in Algeria. We face it in Egypt. And I think a lot of other countries also all around the world um, face this problem. Um, we are uh, in, just to tell you how we are working on it. One of the things that we do is a lot of the insults that go towards athletes or um, coaches or referees, that's a no-no on our social media. So that's monitored by our team. And this is usually also if it's a, an insult that goes beyond uh, uh, anything, we just kind of delete it. So that's not even, that's not even a question. But um, what we also do is we are now in the process of starting a campaign uh, against cyberbullying of athletes and um, sports people, honestly speaking. And, and this is um, a campaign that our team started working on while we were in Tokyo because we saw 
uh, more uh, a spike in uh, the type of insults that come in, not only for us, Bashir, but also for the Arab countries. Um, and I'm not saying it uh, with the campaign that we want to do, we want to do a global campaign, but mainly we are thinking of doing an Arabic written campaign because, to, because there is enough, that's, that's who follows most of our social media, uh, because mostly it's written in Arabic. So this is part of the solution that we are doing to educate the general public on how tough it is to be a, um, a, a, a an athlete, of how tough it is to be a national federation, of how tough sports are. And that not everything goes the way that you plan for it. And this is the example that happened with Algeria during the games, um, which we all, um, which we know very well. And we saw what happened after that. So I hope that answered your question, Bashir. Good. Thank, thank, thanks for that answer. I think uh, risk management is key for this because as much as we want to be positive on sports and the results and our athletes, haters sadly are everywhere. We need to be prepared to it. Uh, we do have some other questions now. Uh, there's a raised hand from Felix. Monique there's written, Dennis. but there, there's written, there's written questions. I just want to answer one or two of them before. Okay. So, okay. Safa, uh, so, uh, so there's the one from Morocco. Uh, hello, can we have the link to this video? Sure. I will. We will send the links to the videos to Gustavo, especially the Arab. Uh, I know. I, I think that was about the last question, the last video, but the three videos. We'll sing, send the links to Gustavo and maybe Anok will send them directly to you. And the other question they has is how many people did you have on your team when coming up with the campaigns? Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, uh, let me give two examples. The total number of videographers and photographers that we have today, because we have a lot of work that is now generated, is for uh, photographers, videographers. We also have one, uh, uh, sorry, it'd be three videographers, photographers. We have one writer. We have one uh, social media expert and we have one designer. And then we have three um, administrative resources in the media department. But usually a campaign like the Tokyo 2020 campaign, you're talking about three to four resources working on it. Um, and, and, and then there was a question about the people who were there. Um, did all your team members, and this is from, um, Velicia, Velisa, Velika, uh, Velika, uh, did all your team members come from the Olympic committee in this specific case? Yes, currently. And are your team members compensated for their time and work? For sure. <laughs> They're employees of the JOC. Um, how often did you post for the games? I think that was the number that we showed at the end. I think it was 157 uh, posts. And then we had almost 220 stories. Was there a dedicated person at the games for the collection of data and to provide updates during the games? Yes, there was a dedicated person in the games to do that. We didn't send those people as part of our core team. We sent them as press. So they were so that they get press access and they work directly from there. So that's a bit of a logistical nightmare during during COVID. Uh, do you want to go with uh, I, I? We can we go with Felix first and then um, continue the quest the written questions. Yeah. Okay. So Felix, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question, Felix Munita from Nosi Zambia. All right. Uh, thank you, Gustavo, and uh, good to see you, Mister. Majari. Yeah, uh, we've enjoyed your presentation. It's uh, quite informative and given a few pointers on how we can improve our socials. I'm uh, the marketing and communications officer for the National Olympic Committee of Zambia. And uh, I had uh, two questions, but one has been tackled already on the number of people that are involved in your production. The second question is uh, Do you have any engagements with the Olympic Channel? Because I've seen some good productions, but do you have them shown on all Olympic uh, Channel platforms? And then the other one is, it goes back to our social media, because uh, one thing we've noticed as Zeno since Zambia is that uh, our social media platforms only come alive when uh, our athletes are competing, doing competition. So how do you keep uh, your social media uh, channels alive, away from competition, and also interactive in terms of how people respond uh, to your social media and how they are building on uh, your audiences on social media. Thank you. 
Um, Felix, I'll answer the second question right if I heard you and understood you correctly. Um, your question is how do we engage, how we keep that live engagement outside of games time, correct? Okay, so that in the beginning of my presentation, I was talking about the type of content that we have, and part of it is news. So us going to the, so if it was in Zambia, it is about you going to uh, the karate tournament happening, covering the karate tournament on your own page with your own photographs, or if you don't have the resources for it, taking it from their photographers or whoever is there. Um, covering some of the videos and interviews in that event. We do that a lot. So technically speaking, about 260, 270 days of the year, you have an event happening, not a games, but an event happening at that time. And that team covers it. For example, every week I get a, um, a request from the media department about the different events that our media team needs to cover and who's going to that event. Um, it, it, this became a system. In 2016, this did not exist. And in 2017, it was two, three media people that we had in our department. So it just grew the more we wanted it to grow. So that's how the content with it grew with our different content pages. So each person can do it or each NOC can do it based on the resources that they have. On the first question, Olympic channel engagement. So we have live engagement with them. What do I mean by that? We sat down with the Olympic channel. We sat our teams together. We did some training sessions that they did for us uh, that we talked about some of the production work on documentaries that we wanted our team to learn. So we worked on that with them. And we've produced, we've assisted in production of productions that they, uh, that uh, international federations wanted to do through them in Jordan. So yes, we have engaged, not as much as we would like to. We talk to them a lot, but now we're more ready to give them more content that is ready so that they turn them into productions. So it's a good question. Not as much as I'd, we'd like to, but close. we're close to getting there. All right, yeah, thank you very much. So maybe just to, to add on uh, before yeah. I leave, um, we're also in the process of uh, setting up our own uh, media studio. We, we did engage uh, the Olympic Solidarity and uh, we've been commentating and also Olympic Channel. Uh, so we'll be setting up our own media, media production uh, studio at the NOC to support the National Federation yeah, so that they can create more awareness on uh, the activities that are undertaken by the Federation and also the NOC. Yeah. And then I liked your point of uh, how you covered the Arab countries during the Olympic Games. I think uh, we can learn something from that, yeah, because uh, I think if we are giving support uh, among each other, then we have, uh, our audiences grow. Yeah, so I think uh, we are trying to work also around that with uh, Southern African NOCs, uh, where we have uh, the zone uh, seven NOCs that are coming together and creating more like a media strategy for the zone that will support each country. So I think I'll reach out to you uh, regarding that. Well, like, more than welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Gustavo, so that was uh, my contribution. Yeah. Gustavo will send you the contacts of a couple of our team members also. If you want to engage with any of them, some of them are already on here, like Hamza, um, like multiple team members from JOC who will easily assist in anything you need, Felix. All right, thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much for your participation. It was very, very interesting. And congratulations on your initiative on building your media team and also working with your uh, partner countries in your region. I think that's a great uh, way. And I think what uh, Jordan is a great example for that. Uh, I, I had a question. I'll, I'll take a hook on, on Felix very quickly because uh, I want to make sure we take all the questions. But what Jordan does, they cover all their national uh, federation events. So that's the way that they feed their uh, channels with content, but so also it becomes a service for the national federations, which are their members. And that's, to me, I think it's one of the key reasons of why they grow uh, their followers to over a million, which in percentage wise into their population size, it's over 10%, which if you put them into perspective within our dashboard, Jordan's actually number one. It's the only NOC that covers more than 10% of the population. So it's definitely a, a good thing for the NOCs that sometimes cannot see the content, but actually the content is there. 
so they can work Bravo, on it. I would like to add on that um and and just for everybody here it's it, it's funny but when you look back at how this was built up it's quite simple and and it's quite straightforward there's no magic involved in anything that was done it was just persistence of keeping the news coming and creation of content and tuning that content to what the the customers want and that customers being your general public in your country or in the countries around you so um the nice part about all of this is yes you can invest money into it and then this is me uh trying to answer kosovo's question congrats for this president do you have a special budget to sponsor your pages campaigns or posts in your social media and honestly speaking the actual investment that we put in is not a significant number with with that reach we're talking about somewhere in the area of 10 to fifteen thousand dollars per year that is invested into campaigns and sponsoring which um as gustavo noted to reach from about 63,000 followers on Facebook to 1.1 million followers on Facebook alone. That's just a very small part of uh, the sponsoring and campaigns. That's, yeah, I mean, that's quite significant. So that tells you how much the content has a major role uh, uh, in, in, in all of that. Go ahead, Gustavo. Good. So now I give the floor to Linda Fisher. She has a raised hand. And then I'll answer the other written questions. There's three of them or two of yeah. them. And we also have Fatma with a raised hand, okay. so we can give her the floor after. So Linda Fisher, if you can open your mic and camera. While Linda is doing that, how about I answer the next question? Yeah, OK. Um, how did, uh, and this is from Morocco, how did you manage the drop in follower numbers after the games? If it was the case for your NSC, as it was for many, it's always the case. The high is the games, any games, Asian games, uh, Olympic games. Uh, honestly speaking, I think I answered it when I was talking to Zambia and that the point was um, that what we did is we have our general content keep coming in and we try to start new campaigns once the games are over. The dip will still happen regardless. Uh, but we we prepare for the next high, which is the Asian Games. Um, Fatima. Hello. Good morning, Hi. afternoon, and evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Nasser, thank you for this opportunity and uh, the great uh, presentation, which was really clear and uh, like explained uh, your uh, roadmap for Tokyo and uh, the result. Uh, my question is about. Um, the promotion and uh, keeping up the winner athletes and the athletes who competed during the Olympics but didn't get the, the place, let's say, they didn't won the didn't win the medals, but were competing good and uh, showed a good effort. So, how to promote them in the community and uh, make them as a role models for other young athletes who are starting to get qualified for the next Olympics? This is a big issue here as well. So um, as you see, I'm from Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan. So we are having good athletes uh, who are competing and uh, being an Olympian. But uh, after the games, after the Olympics, how to keep it up and uh, how to promote or uh, let the other athletes who competed and showed good effort, uh, but uh, you know couldn't get this uh, successful result. Fatima, so, this, this is where, may I? Okay. So Fatima, this is kind of what I was talking about when I was talking about what we did pre-games. This is why we um, collected a lot of data. We recorded interviews with them. We, we, we had archived videos of their whole journey over the last four years, not just nine months before the games. We just started archiving them, training each and every athlete, the ones who qualified, the ones who didn't qualify. And then this becomes part of campaigns that we create. So it's highlighting non-medalists, it's starting to highlight the athletes for the Asian Games. It's a, it's a heroic story of this athlete and how he qualified and remembering the five athletes who qualified to boxing. None of them got medals, but we got a historic five boxers in the Games. So we remember the story of the five boxers 
during the memory day, which is in March of 2022, two years after the qualification. Um, so this is part of it. But more importantly, we just started a project. This is a test project. One of our Olympians who meddled, we brought in a public relations company. So we brought in, I think it was uh, either Wonderman or Team YNR, and we're doing a beta project, testing with him how we can work on his personal reach and teaching our team how this is being done so that our team can do it with the other athletes after that. And we're doing an expansive project. So we're starting now with one or two athletes, and then we're expanding it to um, about 10 athletes, and then we want to expand it to about 100 athletes. So this is just being tested so that we build the social media platforms and language that the different athletes talk so that we build their profile so this becomes credit for them in the future to be used by them in the way that they see best. Does that make sense? So it's Thank you very much. That's <laughs> Thanks, great. Papa. And how is the period, like the time period? Is it long term or are you just this is, to make it this short? Is a, this is a one year project that we are currently doing with the PR company. So it's a monthly thing where they do training, media training, um, uh, social media preparation, all these things are being done in that way, coverage of different games. But we still, as a media team, cover the athlete. We do the production for him because we have the production capability. Great. Good luck with this. And thank you very thank much you. for uh, the initiative and inspiration. And um, you, that's really great to see Gustavo as well after two years that we met uh, <laughs> during the first beach games. So that's a great pleasure to meet mm -hmm. all colleagues and you too. And thank you very much. Good luck with the, um, you, all your work. Thank you. And Team Jordan. Thank you, Fatima. Uh, there's a question from, uh, from St. Lucia. Um, uh, the question is for smaller countries like ourselves in the Caribbean, most times our athletes are not in the island. What do you suggest uh, we do to track their journey? Um, we have a lot of athletes who are not living in Jordan, who, are, who competed in the Olympics like our uh, equestrian athlete. What we've done is we've asked for, uh, we've tried to do photo shoots and videography for them before, but when not accessible, We've contracted uh, photographers and videographers, whether hobbyists or professionals in the countries where they are in to get some of that. But if you wanted to do it in a much more economical way, I would do it through mobile, mobile videos. We've also done live interviews with them on our page. So this was kind of also some of the boosts that we've gotten were because of uh, online interviews that we did live on our Facebook page during COVID and post COVID for the Olympic games. So this is more or less, I think with the world of Zoom, I think it's very easy to do and it still gives them a lot of um, uh, exposure. Only an example of many examples that we can discuss at a later point. Um, I don't know about uh, how do I uh, also another question was how did we get the board to invest? Honestly, I got some support from outside of JOC to begin with. And then we did a couple of projects and then we viewed all we we've we've had them, we've had the board see what we did. They were impressed with what we did and they've invested more. But you guys have it easier. Anok has just created a way for you to sell it to your board, <laughs> which is the data that Anok is putting out, the comparison that's put out. If I were you, and this is what I'm doing with my board right now, I brought in the study that Anok did. I put it in front of the board and I said, we're almost at the top of this leaderboard. We need to sustain it and maintain it and we need to stay there. This shows you how important the media coverage is how significant our reach is and where we should be in a year or two years and how much it will cost. And so, so honestly speaking, what you currently have is a good starting point using what Anok has created as a uh, platform to sell towards your board. Good. We are reaching out, out to the end of our time. Uh, 
once again there's, uh, one, there's one question i just yeah. i just want to read it out if you know yes. where they are social media can help how they are doing and you can arrange the training bearing in mind that they have to report their path to the olympics um i'm i'm not sure i get it but uh, it was a suggestion from uh, uh, okay yeah okay good go good. ahead no uh yeah. just uh, our, our team has put up the link for the feedback form and uh, also our dash uh, the link for our dashboard which is updated every month we have created also a linkedin group that uh, we invite you all to join and so it's a platform for us to exchange before i finish i know it's just time but uh different nocs are now creating their own uh, streaming platforms and we think that this is something that is going to happen more and more in the future uh the brazilian olympic committee they just broadcasted the pan american junior games so they were one of the broadcasters for these events and they, they were very successful on the on this. And also GD Kejvo, who was the chairman of the Mar IOC Marketing Commission from the Czech NOC, created their channel as well. And they created some products which were very interesting. I'll just mention one comment, uh, one example. In Tokyo, they created uh, a program that after their athlete medalists would win a medal, they would jump in a car and there'll be a camera crew filming inside one of the Toyota cars. And then there is this series of them expressing their feelings after, right after winning a medal. So that's a very special moment that they were creating a product out of it to their TV channel. And that product only, they managed to get 100,000 euros from Toyota because they sold this small program that they did to Toyota and they already managed to get 100,000 euros. So there are ways for the NOCs to be creative, not only to expand the reach, but also to monetize on it for the future. I, I have a small comment, Gustavo, on streaming, and this will take exactly 20 seconds. Um, it, it, we, we, we did work on also streaming events and sports. We found it to be the most um, time consuming and uh, we found it to be expensive, but it did get us a lot of followership and a lot of interest. So there's a lot of events happening in your countries that there's no coverage for. And if you get simple mobiles to cover it with on your page with approval of your national federations, this in itself is a stream that will bring in um, followers and interest. Perfect. Good. So with that, we conclude. And uh, once again, I want to thank Nasser and his team for uh, bringing this up and sharing all this information with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. I think that was a great uh, addition to end our session for 2021. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you, everybody. And thanks to my team who worked hard on the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. Enjoy the end of the year, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care.